All right, next up, let's talk about slicers. And you'll see the slicer icon. For me, it's in the lower corner. It looks like a little table with a funnel on top of it. And basically, a slicer is a fancy word for a visual filter. So it behaves just like any other filter, and it applies filter context just like any other type of visualization. And it's a very simple object. It only takes one input, which is some field. So if we were to take something from territories, for instance, and drag country in, it just creates a list of checkboxes. And again, these pass filter context, just like any other filter or visual. You can clear them like this. And you can also format this as a dropdown, which behaves exactly the same way, just a little bit of a stylistic difference. So nothing special about regular slicers. They act just like slicers in a pivot table in Excel as well. But where they get really interesting is when you pull in a date field. So let's go into our calendar, grab date, and swap that in in place of country. And you might be thinking, OK, well, what's so great about that? It's the same exact thing. You're just listing hundreds and hundreds of dates. Well, the thing is, we've got additional options now. Check this out. So between is actually my personal favorite. Between allows a user to set a start date and an end date by dragging these handles on a timeline and customizing the exact date range that you're looking at. You can also type fields and use this calendar pop-up, which is really, really slick in each of these input boxes. So that's the before option. I mean, the between option. Before basically just gives you the end date to play with. After only gives you the start date. And then you can do the normal list or drop down. The last one that's really interesting is relative. And so this allows you to choose things like show me the data from the last 30 days, right? Or the next or this week or this year, whatever it could be, any combination of these fields. Now you might be wondering why did everything blank out when I chose 30 days? Well, look at the date range. This is current data. It's based on actual real-time information, not the data in my data model's calendar. So that particular option is really great when you have current real-time data. You could use this relative option. For now, I think between is going to be our best bet so that we'll have full customization over the window of data that we look at. Now, stylistically, only a couple changes that I think we should make to this formatting. Go into Format tab. I don't want the header. It's just redundant. It's pretty clear that we're looking at dates here. And for the date input formatting, let's just give it kind of a light gray background to make those numbers jump off the page a little bit more. And there we go. So let's kind of position this up here. And we can resize it. I like putting my main controls kind of at the top to make it clear you know, that these are impacting everything you're seeing on this page. Now, already this date slicer is going to be useful because see what happens when we start looking at 2015 dates alone. All we have are bike category sales. And because we only have bikes being sold, there's only a handful of subcategories, in this case, road bikes and mountain bikes. And obviously, all of our products are bike related products. So something changed in AdventureWorks sales strategy or their corporate structure, where they didn't start selling other items until it looks like later in 2016. So turns out that they're not really interested in analyzing the data from 2015. It was kind of a different world. They were just a little bike shop back then. So good opportunity to use a report level filter here. And what I'll do is I'm not selecting any specific visual. I'm going to go and grab that year column from my calendar, drop it into report level filters. And then what we can do is set a basic filter type and select 2016 and 2017. And you see that it basically just summarized what I'm doing here. Year is 2016 or 2017. And now everything in here now reflects that report level filter. Even the timeline itself, I can no longer extend my start date before January 1st, 2016. So now I can be sure that the date ranges that we're looking at here, with the exception of some early dates in 2016, 
should reflect all of the categories that AdventureWorks is selling. Now, a little tease into one of the more advanced concepts here called syncing slicers. You may have noticed on the view tab, there's this option here in the show group that says sync slicers. That opens up a menu that allows me to determine basically the scope of impact that this slicer has, because generally these visuals are gonna impact other visuals on the same page. In other words, their filter context will apply to visuals on that same page. But slicers, if you want kind of a more universal control in a similar way that you would set a report level filter, you can allow a slicer to sync with other pages and therefore control the data and the visuals without having to duplicate and have two different versions of the same slicer operating on two different wavelengths. So right now it's showing me that I have two pages in my report, exec summary and page one. If I show the filter and sync it on both the exec summary and the page one sheet, what this is gonna do is create a copy of this timeline and it's gonna put one right here on page one. And not only that, but when I make a change to one of them, like to seven one, the other changes as well. So these are now synced together and both the slicer and the reports or the visuals on those pages are adjusting accordingly. So that's a great way to make your kind of controls apply not only to the current page and not only to the entire report, but potentially to only specific pages or combinations of pages. So in this case, I don't actually want to sync that. We can close the sync slicers view. And in fact, we don't even need this page one anymore. It's kind of just scrap anyway. So let's delete that page. And there we go. We've got our date slicer here, our matrix, our bar charts. Things are coming along pretty nicely. Next up, we're gonna dig into cards and KPIs.